In this video, we're going to focus on proving if a triangle is isosceles. So we're going to use two column proofs to accomplish that. So consider the uh, picture that's on the board. Let's call this point A, B, and C. And we're given that C is the center of the circle. Our goal is to prove that triangle ACB is isosceles. So how can we do this? Well, let's start with a two column proof. On the left side, we're going to put statements and on the right side, reasons. So let's start with the first statement, that point C is the center of the circle. And that's given. Now number two, what else can we see? If we know C is the center, what else do we know? What do we know about segments AC and BC? AB is a chord, but AC and CB that represents the radius of the circle. The radius is the distance between the center of the circle and any point on the circle. Points A and B are on the circle. So therefore, we could say that segment AC is congruent to segment BC. And the reason for that, they both represent the radius of the circle. So what can we put in the second column? What's the reason for this? All radii of a circle are congruent. That's the reason. So now, because we have a triangle where two sides are the same, we can now say that this is an isosceles triangle. So triangle ACB is isosceles. Now what should we write in the second column? We could say that if two sides, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle is isosceles. And so that's it. That's how you can prove that this particular triangle is an isosceles triangle. Now let's try another example. So this one is going to involve a lot more steps. So let's call this A, B, C, D, and this is going to be point E. Now in this problem, we're given that segment EB is congruent to segment EC. Now we're also given that B and C, that's points B and C, they trisect segment AD. And finally, angle ABE is congruent to angle D, C, E. So our task is to prove that triangle A, E, D is an isosceles triangle. So feel free to work on this problem if you want. Pause the video and then write out the two column proof. And then when you finish, just unpause it to see if you have the right answer. Now before we begin, let's see if we could plan out some steps. So our goal is to prove that triangle AED is isosceles. So this is triangle AED. In order to prove that that particular triangle is isosceles, 
we need to show that two sides are congruent. Either AE equals ED or AE equals AD something. So we got to prove that two sides are congruent. In order to prove that those two sides are congruent, what we could do is prove that triangle AEB is congruent to triangle DEC. If we could prove that those two triangles are congruent, then any part of those two triangles are congruent, including their sides. So let's try to do that. So let's start with what we're given. EB is equal to EC. So let's uh, write that in the first column. So segment EB is congruent to segment EC. And that's just, that's given to us. And let's mark it on the diagram. So this is EB and this is EC. So that's a step in the right direction. Now let's move on to our second given statement. And that is points B and C trisect segment AD. And that's given to us as well. Now, if points B and C, if they trisect this segment, what does that mean? Well, a segment bisector is basically a point that splits the segment into two congruent parts. So if two points trisect a segment, that means that they split the segment into three congruent parts. So that tells us that AB is congruent to BC and BC is congruent to CD. So all three of those sides, so AB, BC, and CD, they are congruent to each other. So what can we write for the reason for step three? Well, we could say it's based on the definition of a segment trisector as opposed to a segment bisector. Now I'm going to need to make some more space. So what I need to do is just get rid of this stuff because I already have it in the statements column. So let's delete that. And now let's move on to step four. But before we do that, let's mark a few details on the diagram. So what we really need is A, B, and C, D. That's what we got to show. Because our goal, remember, is to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And BC is outside of those two triangles. So I'm going to mark that AB is congruent to CD, which we do have here. Now, I only need to prove one more feature that of these two triangles. If I can prove that something else is congruent, then I could state that those two triangles are congruent. And we're given this. So in statement four, we could say that triangle, or rather angle, angle ABE is congruent to angle DCE. And so that's given to us. And now let's mark it in the graph. So this is ABE, and here is angle DCE. So ABE is congruent to DCE. So now we have enough information to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So we can make the statement that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle DCE. Now what's the reason for it? So notice that we have a side, an angle, and a side. So based on the SAS postulate, the two triangles are congruent. And so for the first side, if we go in order, it was based on statement one. EB is congruent to EC. Now the angle was based on statement four. 
And then we prove that these two sides are congruent, and that was based on statement 3. So the reason is SAS, statements 1, 4, 3 in that order. In the order of SAS, not necessarily in a numerical order. So now what else can we say? Now that we've proven that the two triangles, ABE and DCE, are congruent. So what statement can we make at this point? If two triangles are congruent, then all of their corresponding parts are congruent. So we can now say that segment AE is congruent to segment ED. So AE is congruent to DE. And the reason CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles, are congruent. So now that we've proven that those two sides are congruent, we can go one step beyond CPCTC. And so we could prove that triangle AED is an isosceles triangle. And the reason for that is the same as the last example. Let's see if I can fit it in here. So if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle is an isosceles triangle. And that's it. So now you have two examples on how to prove that a triangle is isosceles. The basic idea is your goal is to prove that two sides are congruent. Once you have that, then you can make the final statement that that triangle is isosceles. And you can use the same reason if you want to. So now you know how to prove if a triangle is isosceles. Now let's look at one more example. So let's say that this is point A, B, C, D, and here we have E. Now in this problem, wait, let's mention one more thing. Let's say this is angle 1 and angle 2. So we're given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. In addition, CE is congruent to DE. Prove that triangle AEB is isosceles. So let's do a two column proof. Statements. And reasons. If you want to, based on the last two examples, go ahead and tackle this problem. Now, before we begin, let's create a mental outline of what we need to do in order to prove that triangle AEB is isosceles. So what do we need to know in order to prove that that triangle is isosceles? We need to show that AE is congruent to EB. And in order to show that those two segments are congruent to each other, we need to show that triangle ACE is congruent to BDE. So how do we prove that those two triangles are congruent? Well, let's start with statement one. Let me write small. I might need some more space. I went too far. So we could say that angle one is congruent to angle two. And that's given to us. And we can mark it on the graph. So here it is. This angle is congruent to that angle. Now let's go in order. So number two. We could also say that this angle 
is congruent to this angle. Why can we say that? Whenever two lines intersect each other, they will produce something known as vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent to each other. So for statement two, we could say that, let's see if I could fit it in here, angle AEC is congruent to angle BED. And the reason? Vertical angles are congruent. So that's what we could say for the reason. Now, let's move on to the next part. So we know that CE is congruent to ED. And that simply is a statement that was given to us. So let's write given. Now, we have enough information to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So let's make the statement that triangle AEC, so that's this triangle, that is congruent to triangle, I messed up that symbol, let's do that again, BED. So this is BED. Now what's the reason? Why can we say that those two triangles are congruent? So we have an angle, an angle, and a side. So it's based on the AAS postulate. So starting with this angle, it came from statement 1. And then the second angle, vertical angles, came from statement 2. And then the third part, the side, came from statement 3. So it's based on statements 1, 2, and 3. Now that the two triangles are congruent, we can make a statement that their corresponding parts are congruent. So we can now say that AE is congruent to BE. So that's going to be statement 5. AE is congruent to BE. And the reason for that is, as we know, CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So now we can make the final statement that triangle AEB is isosceles. And the reason is the same as the last example. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle is isosceles. And there you have it. So hopefully these three examples help you to understand how to prove if two triangles are isosceles. So thanks for watching. I meant to say that one triangle is isosceles, not two, because <laughs> we only proved that this triangle is isosceles.